Oh, yeah, no, that was good. That was not at all how I expected this to go. I've been told time and uh, time and again that Classic is a very cheesy player, but this was just very straight up play. He uh, set that up in position. I must say that that timing uh, of that attack on Sue, if it had come five seconds earlier, because you could see on that very first attack, you could see Classic pulling back those um, those high Templars in that corner, and he didn't storm, and he didn't storm, and he didn't storm, and they had. 100 uh, energy and that's when he yeah, pushed it back yeah it was it was very very close and you can see how classic bought himself so much time with that with his oracle harassment killing 14 workers early on yes it was evened up later but very early on he gets in with an oracle he does damage and he just buys himself ever little amounts of times here and there and i think each game classic has opened up with 10 15 worker kills and as you just said very cheesy player tends to be good with his micro and that's exactly what we see from classic Wrecking workers all over the place. Holy shit. But all those banelings, all those banelings. If I make that many banelings, I expect to destroy the world. And Classic yeah. just well, handled those very nicely. He handles it nicely. And on top of that, I feel like you don't want quite as many banelings. You want to have more hydras with the DPS, especially when you've invested in them. You know he didn't have Hydra upgrades though, or pardon me, he had a uh, he had speed and range, but he did not have plus one one or plus one range for those Hydras. From very early on, he heavily invested into Lings and was trying to end the game on three to four base versus three base. Not when it came to the late stage where he was simply not prepared for that. That was Sue trying to clinch a very quick win, especially after that pool opener, and it never went his way. We are now even. The next game will say who wins this best of seven. Next game will decide who takes the big, big money. Uh, I wasn't actually paying that close attention. We were at 180 bucks. Uh, let me see in my preview window right there. We're 185 right now. So very close to getting these guys 200. So 200 gets you guys your interview as well. And uh, yeah, let me see what. Oh, shit. No, that's math. That's math. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, so guys, the winner gets a bigger percentage of that than the smaller one. Uh, let's just keep it at that. The moment, though, guys, please follow below. I know Polygon Gaming would really appreciate it. They've put it on seven of these. This is the seventh invitational. In past times, they've had players like Scarlet, Neeb, Kelazor. I'm trying to think who else we had. A laser at Hearthstone. These are phenomenal best of seven show matches. They get yeah. players out from all walks of life and all of them incredibly good players like a laser even showing up at BlizzCon, Sue and Classic mm -hmm. doing similar things. So please, please, please follow below. You don't have to do anything for it. You don't even need to give the money mm -hmm. for Match Arena if you yeah. just follow and support. Yep. Follow us at Polygon SE2, Twitter, Twitch. Uh, oh, wait, aren't you here? Click that follow button. You don't have to find it. It's easy. You're right here. It's yeah, here. you just follow below. Yeah. Check I'm out sure. Polygon SC2 on Twitch, YouTube, and Twitter. It's all just Polygon SC2 on each. But here we are, ladies and gentlemen, for game seven of this best of seven. In the bottom left-hand corner, able to even it up last game at three to three. It is the blue Protoss player, Classic. And his opponent's getting evened out because I couldn't do that right it's Sue as I get the uh, score screens right my apologies and once again Sue busts out that early early spawning pool now he is trying to sell the story that he's trying to uh, trying to expand but to be perfectly honest uh, well yeah, it's a good story the right there. Yep. Fantastic story. Classic will invest a pile into Sue's natural. He sees the pool first, and this is going to be a rough map to hold overgrowth because there is no ramp at the natural. Classic would have preferred to wall in his main base. He's instantly going to move down to get an extra pylon there, and then the cybernetics core to make sure he has a strong defense. But both pylons will be exposed. For now, though, Sue is going to decide not to make links, and so his scouter actually checked that he has made the links. He's just going to make six, though, like he did last game, to check if his opponent has been greedy or not. And if they haven't, then he's going to try to macro his way out of it. Yep. Uh, worked. Didn't work too well for him in the last game, but I do believe there has been a better map, though. Yep. That is, that is very much true. Oh, oh no. That, there's the Zealot right on time. Uh, Sue's going to try and do... 
attack that weak point of Protoss is everywhere, those pylons right there. And with the three Zerglings he's got right there, it does mean that a Classic can't actually do anything to lose the Zealot. Ooh. Classic fully walls in. This second Zealot should come out on the outside of the wall to join in with the first, and this is going to be enough to push this back. Classic's natural base has been delayed a little bit, but overall he's defended quite successfully, and the tech for Sue has been heavily delayed. His queens, or not, not really heavily delayed, but overall the, the macro of Sue's economy. His tech actually could get somewhere really quickly if he tries to go for a two base play. Mm -hmm. We have seen two base lurkers for a while, not currently, but that'd be something he could opt to go into. But now all he's happened to do is actually force out an aggressive opener from Classic. And Classic is going to deliver. He's got that. Uh prylon right uh just underneath the airspace uh of the main base and going to pump down a stargate for some oracle in your face action he knows that sue is in his base and sees all of his tech choices uh so yeah putting that down trying to get a little bit of a jump on sue i like the way the how we uh managed to keep that zell alive by the way eight hit points very very nicely done yeah, Classic is a little bit worried that there was more Lings on the map or didn't think he could hold when Lings would come out. Generally, there would be a huge round of Lings. So I guess Classic did hope to force out Lings from Sue. He only forced out four. While Sue is still droning, as I've said before, he does not scare easily, but he should be scared of this Oracle on the way. And traditionally, in this best of seven, he is not defended well versus even one Oracle. Although he should know that something's come up his way. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in the, this map, yeah, maybe it was the overload is a scatter thing. anything. Yeah, uh, but he knows that uh, at this point in, a, uh, in the game, your opponent has more than a gateway and a cybernetic score. So unless there was something right here, which he didn't scout, there is something on the map that's about to hit him in the face. And he should be realizing something to that effect. And he's not building any... Defense against well, he has it, actually, and here we go. Yeah, he has actually invested into a quick third base. Instantly, all the drones are pulled to the natural. There is not an extra queen. The queen that was on that ramp was from the natural base, and this oracle is going to have a couple moments to do damage, but really what it'll do is bring almost all the drones... Uh, Actually, no, the drones did go back into the main base of Sue after they were at the natural, but it will pull them around, and a second oracle is on the way. Already that first oracle, though, got seven kills done. Yeah. Classic is wreaking havoc on Sue. Simple as that. Uh, two zealots do find that proxy position, and a very slowly warped in adept is going to deal with it. But the cat is out of the bag. And, oh no, is that still that first oracle? Yes, it is. That is that still for that first oracle. When the queen came up to the main base to defend against it, it was caught on the ramp for a few seconds, didn't have creep, and was not able to. Uh, deal with that oracle quick enough so two oracles for a total of 14 workers a classic must be very pleased with himself does wall in extra hard with that extra warp gate behind that very uh, squishy yeah. pylon oh. right there yeah exactly it's that one pylon could go down so quickly to a quick bailing bust he needs to be careful no. third base is a double queen it is a little exposed but the oracles are too low on health for now to engage do you know, the pylon on the bottom right is still alive on the right-hand side. It was not killed by those lings. Uh, uh, so far, Classic has uh, gone for double uh, Oracle quite often. He's never built more than that, I do believe. So Sue may just feel comfortable leaving that up there for now. Uh, of course, he did invest in those spore crawlers, which, you know, generally do well against them. You're going to lose one or two workers, but you're not going to lose five or seven. Classic takes his third base. Simultaneously, Blink and Plus One are on the way and extra gates, so he's opening himself up for, or he is preparing himself for a nice timing attack against the third base of Sue. While simultaneously, as I said, taking his third base, his own. He's playing it just very safe overall. He's not going to try to end it anywhere. He's going to take this to the middle to late game. Yep. All right, well, it's the last game of the map. The last game of the map. That's not a. That's not a correct phrase. The yeah. last game of the series. So yeah, you do want to make sure you don't overcommit and throw away in that last map on an overcommittal. So classic is going to split up his army. Don't split. Don't yeah. split the party. Don't split the party. 
Yeah, he's got to be super careful about that. For a few seconds, he did, but at least with the Oracles at the front of the army, they will provide vision and possibly even a revelation to deal with some of this creep. Classic moves in, and Sue is on 61 drones. He's on the correct drone count that he wants, maybe a couple more. So these units being forced out are not a big issue. Double Oracle in the air will go almost uncontested where they can focus down some of these Ravagers and all the lanes are caught in the Stasis Ward. Plus, there's a power opportunity to move forward, but he's kind of stuck behind those lanes for a second. Will pull back. Blink is a few seconds away from being done, and this is the attack. He's going to try to ride out to victory if he can, but I don't think he just has enough potency with this. He needs a Warp Prism, something to reinforce with, and he's going to pull back for now. Not finding the correct timing he wanted and reinforcing with the rest of these Stalkers and his Warp Prism. Now that position, that attack path on Overgrowth is infamous amongst Zerg players because uh, it's so easy to just cut off that attack path uh, with a couple of well-placed force fields. But Sue was in position with his forces on the top left of that uh, base and Classic knew he couldn't get the full surround right there. Oh, he's moving once again. There's a nice lot of Zerglings. Oh. A lot of nice force fields and nice guardian shield, but in the end, they're keeping the army out, but not killing too much. Classic has to be very careful not to use too many. He does have this warp prism here to keep reinforcing on. We have 60 army supply to 60. It started off 80 to 70, but these force fields have allowed Classic to get a little bit of extra damage out. Remember, Blink is done also, so he hasn't even been blinking that uh, that well. He's getting big Blink's back, and he's simply got enough after killing a total of 14 workers in the early game. It looks like Classic is going to take this four to three, but it's we not quite over yet. Drones, drones are being, being pulled to the left hand side. Yeah, drones being pulled to the last des uh, best desperate stand of Sue. If he wants to take this home, he's going to have to crush this, absolutely crush this. He moves forward. Everything does uh, manage to stand still on a army standpoint, but all of his drones are gone, and he now classic starts t uh, whittling down the last of the army of Sue as he does bait uh, some of his army, uh, his opponent's army into that uh, stasis trap and he moves on forth and Sue, Sue, nope, we played so hard, but it doesn't even matter. Nope. War Drunk being pulled, Sue's not going to give up just yet, Roaches were popping right before this attack happened, the Hydro Den was on the way, but it looks like, I'm not sure if it was cancelled or what happened, but GG in the end, Classic finds that timing, and he finds a timing where even if he trades out evenly, his third base is going to be fantastic for him, GG, well played, Classic takes the series 4-3. to three. Congratulations, Classic, with 32 to 68%. Nobody thought you were going to do it. Well, I guess a couple of pe people thought you were going to do it. Very nice attack. And, oh, that, that, this is, this, that map as a Zerg versus Protoss is just so hard. And that attack, especially with that early aggression, that mm -hmm. you can hold it, but if you lose that much at the start, Oh, a classic busting out. Not a complete cheese, but just a little bit of cheekiness with that proxy or uh, Stargate. What I love is, yeah, it's, it's that. It's cheekiness. It's not cheese because really, if you look at the beginning of that game, Sue opens up pool first. He goes for a 14 pool and pressures. Yeah. And because of how much classic has to do, in, invest into the defense it allows them to get a couple of zealots out it allows them to get uh, an adept and then also go for that proxy gate so there's a lot of potential to push and even though the zealots and etc don't really go over the other side and do damage he's as sue still has to worry about it and can't quite drone as happily as he would like to and then man no. just the damage classic did all throughout every single game no. he has killed so many workers so many workers crazy amounts that's wow. true that's true and despite that sue managed to bring uh to to take three of those maps uh right well classic beating uh beating sue four to three uh i didn't see that coming you said he was going to win although with three two so you know there's i, I, I said four one bit. the three two was a joke i was thinking <laughs> he was gonna four one him you know four one uh, i have a little a little bit more faith in that so yeah thanks everyone for coming in and watching these two guys duke it out i would like to give personally but i'm not going to uh we're going to use dhl or something like that to beast a bunch of glasses so congratulations right there Ooh, is that team gravity's beast i don't know does team gravity's beast have a oh. capitalized s 
Yeah, Team Gravity isn't a uh, team anymore, but it used to be Team Gravity. Uh, and Beast, they hosted a number of tournaments that I actually casted for him. So that'd be pretty cool. Thank you, everybody, for watching. If you're watching right now and you think to yourself, you know what? Yeah, the casters kind of suck, but that was some pretty high-level games. Follow below because you can see even more high-level games. This is the seventh Polygon Invitational. Mm -hmm. Every single invitation, uh, Invitational has incredibly high-level games. Uh, we've had Mead before. We've had Scarlet, Elazer Harstom, which uh, Elazer was at BlizzCon. We've had these fellows. Please, please, please follow below and you can know when the next Invitational happens. Yep. Or uh, if you take just that little bit at the end of Twitch and put instead Twitter, you will get to the Twitter account. Also, I was joined today by a uh, marvelous fellow called Dranok. Dranok, where can people find you? Well, if you check me out at Jarenok on Twitter, Twitch, or YouTube, it's just twitter.com forward slash D-R-E-N-N-O-C and Drenok respectively for YouTube and Twitch. I'd really appreciate it if you threw me a follow. I don't stream too much recently because I've been doing a lot of casting, but I do do a lot of commentary. So definitely check me out at Twitter. Uh, at, I am literally at Twitter on Twitter. It's check me out at Jarenok on Twitter to see when I cast other stuff. And I'm very excited to continue casting stuff for polygon gaming guys once again please please follow below support polygon they've put on awesome content and really really worked hard to get good players in so you guys can have a good saturday morning all right and uh if you want to find me i am this guy on twitter on uh, twitch and on youtube i'm marsh gaming as a matter of fact just before we leave out, I'd like to thank everyone that uh, was uh, involved in making this happen. And uh, for February, I would like to say that we have... Let me look this up. <laughs> we have Golden. We have Alive. We have Solar. We don't know who we're going to have play against who. I'm guessing we're not playing uh, Golden versus Alive or Solar. So if you guys uh, do know who uh, would be a good match against Golden... Don't say Avila. Then please let us know and we'll see if we can make that a reality. Uh, coming in sometime February, uh, if you follow us on the Twitters, on the Team Liquids and whatever, then we you will find out when that is and we will try and make uh, that a reality for you. For now, I'd say thank you, good night and uh, be good to one another. <laughs>